it's sitting here? Okay. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a battery. What you do? Yeah. I have a longer cord. Too. I have the charger. will charge it. Okay. I have a plug in right now.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave We pray that you will be with us in a real way, with us in comfort, with us in assurance, with us in peace, with us in hope. Oh God, and I pray, oh God, that everyone here at the end of this service will be better off than when we came. And so we commit everything into your care. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 At this time, I'll hand over to Andrew.
want to call to Mert. To, oh, you may be seated. <laughs> talking about is that love is what makes this life because without it none of us we don't have anything it would be so empty so I wanted to share with you How I feel. I heard talk about eulogies, something I would have had to sit down and think about and write down and cram into my brain. I decided I'm going to take the real route and I'm going to talk to you about love. It's all I know, because, like I said, without it, I know I wouldn't have had it. There is a woman, who's here with us today? I'm going to just tell you, in the very beginning, how it worked out how she and I ended up being together. It's not a long story. I'm going to keep it short. One day, she came around the corner with some friends. And she asked me, are you Jamaican? <laughs> and I said, no. But I could be from anywhere if I thought that I could see you again. She said, oh, how can you get so serious? And I said, lady, I could get quite delirious thinking about you, your sweet love, if I could ever see you again. <coughs> Round the corner she came. My life would never be the same. <laughs> Round the corner she left, and I, I thought I'd never see her again. But then I realized, once we had gotten in touch again, that I had said the right thing. No one else could have said what I said and the way I said it. And that was love. So, Everyone here knows we're here to celebrate that. We're here to celebrate life and love. And I hope that when you leave here, that you have just a little bit more of it in your life. Because I know I do. Without this woman, My life wouldn't have been the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merck. I'm going to call Michael Murphy to say a scripture.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> there is a time for everything and a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to hear, to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we're gonna follow Dante and Tiffany. Oh, Dante. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out today. I know it was kind of easy to get here, but I was kind of filled up my first day of time today. Um, so here today, pay our tribute to uh, my mother, this beautiful, loving woman, George Dennis Mary. I had some written up, I'm just going to read what I had. So, like, I really looked up to her, not because it's obvious that she's my mom, but I asked, but if you ask anybody who knows her, they'll be able to relate. She was always so loving and forgiving, truly lived up to her name, Joy. I mean, unless she did something wrong to one of her beloved loved ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like the trunk that kept the whole family tree together. I look around, I see nephews, nieces, aunts, uncles, and honestly, with, without her, none of this would be. It's amazing. But it was more than that. Like, when us siblings wouldn't, wouldn't really be getting along, you know, we're not talking, we're name calling, she'd really get into the root of the situation and would be the voice of peace and forgiveness. Truly master that motherly touch on things. She taught us a lot. I personally have entrusted her to take on full temporary custody of my own newborn daughter, Genesis. First, because I had to, but secondly, because I knew the blessing it would be to be twined up in her, in her loving aura that she carried with her everywhere that she went. If she cares about you, she's spoiling you rotten with full, uncut emotional support, but with lots of candy. <laughs> a lot of y'all here know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, I felt like I could come to her for anything, and she would always be there in a heartbeat, ready and waiting to help. Long before all the questions were asked, she was already there with the answers. Among other things, Mummy was a creative and original business owner who paved the way for myself and siblings through inspiration to start our own businesses and to strive to be a boss. Yet can never pronounce the number three without sounding like she's trying to pronounce the most common thing in a forest. <laughs> she was a real trini, that lady. All the way to the Polarian doubles. <laughs> oh, and her favorite color is red. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, like, I love her a lot. Thank you all for coming here. Thank you, Mummy, for this blessing of life. And you know what? I don't believe that it's done after death. So I know she's in a better place. And I love you. Thanks. Amen. Amen. I was one of the last made I can The mother. <clears throat> The baby, the last one. I first 
met my mom. I first met my mom September 18th, 1991. I don't really remember much up until I was four or five. What I do remember is my mom was always so warm and loving, calling me Pookie, Popo, Pumpkin, and Aggie, everything but my name. <laughs> Unless I was in trouble. <laughs> I remember laying on her belly, just listening to her heart and her stomach. Falling asleep in the most comfortable embrace. I used to have nightmares after watching scary movies. And almost every night, up until I was seven, I would go to her room, knock on her door, tell her I was scared, and she would want me to come in bed and lay with her. When I was seven, I was listening to the radio, and my favorite pop star, Britney Spears, was in town. So when I went downstairs that morning, I told my mom how distraught I was that I couldn't go, and went about my day. Later that afternoon, she came to tell me to get ready. She was taking me to that concert. So we headed into the city, and she found tickets off the scalper. She got me in an outfit, and I got to go to my first concert with my favorite person. I remember the brightness in her eyes and how happy I was to go. We didn't have much growing up, but my mom always did her best to make sure we were always happy and comfortable. She was the most hardworking woman I've ever known. When I was 9, 10, 11, my mom would always ensure we were having fun. She would ask us if we wanted to have a slumber party in the basement where we would watch movies, eat snacks, and then we would fall asleep, me and my brother, on either side of her comfy as can be. When I was 12, I was so bored during summer break Every day, all day, I would tell my mom how bored I was. Then one day, she told my brother and I to pack our suitcases that we were going to Trinidad for the summer. That summer was spent watching Bollywood movies at the cinema, visiting family, going to the beach, and bonding with my brother and my mommy. My mom was always taking us on walks, taking us to the splash pad and the pool in the summer, going to the Bread and Honey Festival in Wonderland. <coughs> she was just such an amazing mom who really wanted us to enjoy life to the fullest. Holidays were spent helping her make macaroni pie, country cream, bread, sweet bread, rum cake, pound cake, all the training classics that she learned from my granny. As I said, we didn't have much, but she would always ensure that every Christmas was amazing. So many gifts and food every year. Every Valentine's Day, she would get me a card, chocolate, and a stuffed animal, and tell me that she would always be my Valentine. <laughs> my mom was the most caring and thoughtful person, always doing whatever she could for other people, even when she was going through hard times. She would be everyone's light, knowing in her heart that hard times would pass and she would make it through. Eventually, when I moved out, I would talk to my mom regularly and she would always immediately know if something was up with me just by hearing me say one word. Then she would proceed to be funny and silly, easily making me smile and laugh. I will really miss talking to her about nothing and laughing at everything. After she got sick, I would always tell her 
how hard I needed her to fight because I needed her to be at my wedding and see me have a child. And I'm so grateful that she fell on for that long. If I have gotten anything from my mom, it was her strength and perseverance. <coughs> she was so strong. She was the best mom I could have ever asked for. She was my best friend, my rock, and my life. I will miss her high-pitched voice, her laugh, her cute trinny accent, and her warmth. I will love her forever until the end of time, and even after that. And I know she will always love me. I can't truly begin to articulate how special my mom was to me and how much she meant to me. She was my mommy, and I will always be her baby. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Well, oh, wow. Mike, I just want to say something to you. Remember, um, Sorry, the accent. <laughs> I remember when I just met Tanya before 9 11 time. And the first time I met Joy, she embraced me with open arms. You know, I thought she was like drunk or something at the time, but she wasn't. She was, that's her natural personality. She just embraced me like she knew me for a long time. You know, getting me comfortable in the house. The first time I entered in the house, too. And then um, she said, she asked me if I'm hungry. I'm saying, yeah, man. And then she said, you want anything you, anything you want to do? And then she was making curry, something curry. And I remember she put the oil in the pot. And something <laughs> happened in the kitchen. And then she screamed out. And I prayed that the oil went in her hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I felt. Uh, at first I laughed because I heard, I, I didn't know what happened at first. I thought they were messing around and I laughed. And she came around and, she, and I saw that hand. And when she caught me laughing, you know, when I finished laughing, I just realized what just happened. And I felt bad. I felt so bad all over the years. And, you know, when she was living with us, I don't know, say like three months ago, she brought it up. Wow. And then I said, Mommy, you forgive me? She said, yes, I forgive you. You know what I mean? I said, I'm sorry, I didn't eat. I, everything happened so fast that day, and I know you're cooking for me and you're burning your hand. I said, Father, boy, that I'm so, so sorry. She said, oh, Angel, I forgive you, I love you. And then she living with us, you know, she know I'm a Christian. She witnessed my life before I became a Christian to when I became a Christian. And she saw the changes in in her daughter's life, in my life, and everything started to be like an open book to her, right? I remember a couple, couple like two years ago, she accepted Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior. She accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. She and Marvin at the same time. Um, that's the only, honest to God, that's the only closure I have. I'm gonna miss her. I just all my at the hospital, you know what I mean? It was hard. But the fact that I know where she is, you know, we can't always seek to go there. Because it's our car insurance, we have house insurance, she got her soul insurance. She covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. The best coverage ever. And she did accept that. And Anybody want to see her again? <coughs> you got to get that coverage. <laughs> that religion of the preacher is Jesus, man. He's straightforward. You know, I don't want to come up here and preach, but I'm just a bit being factual, real. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it is. Because that's what it comes down to on earth. When you live, you die. But when you go after, 
you know, the choice they make while you're alive. Yeah. She didn't make that choice. As a matter of fact, God won't let her live with me without even knowing that anyways. You know what I mean? But we just love on her, we love on her. She just gave him, man. Her heart was so soft that she gave him. And that was the most beautiful thing ever. And for me, I'm happy where she is now. So I know I'm going to see her again. Yeah. Not like I'm not going to see her again. I'm going to see her again. You know what I'm saying? So some other relatives that are like, even my dad, everybody. So, with that said, I want to follow up Mike to go on to the scripture reading. Thank you. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This one I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flesh, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable. And we will be changed. For the perishable must be clothed itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord not in vain. Yes. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to call Tabitha, the eldest daughter, and the first child. Joy Janice Reese on March 1st, 1955. Nina and Huggy Reese. She was the fourth of 12 children. Jennifer, Jacqueline, Judith, Janelle, Josie, Ruben, Ruthven, Rupert, Raymond, Robert, and Romeo, who were all raised on the island of Trinidad and Tobago. She was a vibrant soul one who literally lit up the room whenever she entered. Her sister said that anyone who met her instantly loved her. Her name described her perfectly. She was truly joyous. Her laughter was heartfelt and joyful. She was pure joy. Marie would never want to go through the woods to the beat of her own drums. She always made the best out of every situation.
you know, building us for children. Love, confidence, perseverance, creativity, kindness, and strength. We are who we are because of her. She went above and beyond to always ensure our happiness. And she loved us with her whole being. She made raising five kids look happy. I have fond memories, and I will never forget our family vacations, especially Christmas. Mommy loved Christmas, and spared no expense to ensure we had a very happy one. I have fond memories of our Christmas tree overflowing with gifts, and our home filled with the sounds of Calypso, and the delicious scents from her baking, especially her macaroni pie, which by far is the best, and still is the best. <coughs> share for a few moments and draw your attention to God's word. And I'm going to speak on assurance according to God. Assurance according to God. We are in a very uncertain world. We accept as norm in this world 
the good things. What the Bible teaches that the good things are the exception. The bad things are the norm. If you measure that in, in your own life. The norm is pain, suffering, struggle, and death. Yet we still have an innate desire of pleasure, happiness, and life. This is because we were designed to have joy and happiness and life at its fullest, and that forever. It is what it is. We try to normalize our normal world. Death is a grim reaper. Death is the universal enemy. Some try to make friends with death through euthanasia. We call it good death. Still others try to make be at peace with death through um, reincarnation, um, different process like metempsychosis, the transmigration of the soul and all those technicalities. Good karma, bad karma, um, and they say it leads to a better life up to nirvana. Some believe that. Some trust in science through cryonics. Still others try cyber psychosomatic possibilities in cyberspace, where you can upload your consciousness into cyberspace, when the body is non-functional. And still others try self-signaling technology through a thing called apoptosis, where they, um, they manipulate the gene and the expressions of um, telomeres and so on to try and slow down the aging process. And yet still, Others try transhumanism, where they believe that through scientific discoveries and higher knowledge and learning, they'll be able to transcend this present humanism. And so transhumanism will eventually lead to what is called post-humanism, where we will be um, the true humans that we ought to be, defying death and living a life of freedom. But all these are synthetic solutions to this problem we call death. We all have to escape here sometime, sooner or later, one thing or another. The only way to get out of here is through death. <coughs> and Ecclesiastes 7, verses one, verse 1, B and 2 and 3 says, the day of death is better than the day of birth. We don't like that. That's in the Bible. Death teaches us more than birth does. We celebrate when a baby is born, we weep when a person dies. The Bible says it should be a way around. And so therefore, it is better to, the Bible says it's better to spend time at a funeral than at a festival. In other words, it's better to spend time here than watch the Leafs game or some other thing like that. But we don't think like that. We're all destined to die and we should think about it while there is still time. Sorrow is better than laughter, the Bible says. <coughs> Sadness is good for the heart because it's refining. Now there's a right kind of sorrow and it, where it, it, it teaches the heart to be wise and honest and true. Because the Bible says, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. I'm not trying to be sad here. Come to celebrate life. But I have to state reality as it is. Not pessimism, but realism. There's a kind of sorrow that is good for the soul because it accurately positions the soul in the directions towards God, eternity, and one's own mortality. At a funeral, we are actually rehearsing our own funeral. We are reminded that if this is not home. How can it be home and be so unhomely? This sorrow is better than laughter because it puts the heart in a mandatory mode of adjustment where it is somehow very reflective on its own condition before its creator. In fact, Job 22 verse 21 tells us, Acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace, and let thy soul delight itself in fatness. And there are four quick things it does. Acquaint now thyself. It is pressing. 
between now, with a sense of um, presence, urgency. We do not know what tomorrow holds. Because if fit as a fiddle, that won't count if a Mac truck fits her. And so therefore, it is pressing. I claim now thyself and be at peace. Secondly, it is not only pressing, but it's personal. I claim now thyself. We have to know God for ourselves, our Creator. An authentic relationship with Him. Not secondary through someone else, but through God direct contact through Jesus Christ. Thirdly, it is peaceful and be at peace. And the peace doesn't mean a cessation of turmoil. It means a, a stability of one's being in the midst of turmoil. And it, is, it speaks about a safety. When there's peace, there's a sense of safety in one's condition. No matter how tumultuous something is, one is ultimately safe from ultimate destruction. We are restless until we find all rest. In God. And then fourthly, it is profitable, and thy soul shall delight itself in fatness. Now, we are very profitable in this country, and we have many things that others don't have. And we are still, deep down, not fulfilled and not happy. Because we're trying to satisfy something that this world and its things cannot ultimately satisfy. There's more depression, more suicides, more this, more that. I've done so, so many funerals like this, of, of, of that kind of nature, I should say. Because we have everything, but yet still we have a sense of emptiness. So it is profitable. And let your soul, your innermost being, delight itself in fatness. You know, Jesus said in John 14, verses 1 to 4, Jesus said, um, in essence, I'm paraphrasing now, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it was so, I'd have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and when I come, I'll receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Isn't that wonderful? That Jesus came and changed everything. <coughs> Some statistics would indicate that um, the month of the year that globally has the most births is the month of September. And why that is so is because if September, between the 9th to the 19th of September, you have more births than any other time on the planet every year, statistically, it means that conception probably took place during the Christmas. <laughs> So even the coming of Jesus, you got it, right? Even the coming of Jesus spiked life globally. Is that wonderful? So even his birth brought light at this time. Now what am I saying this? Because Jesus gives some assurance. He said, let not your heart be troubled. It's a troubled world. And yet he commands us, let not your heart be troubled. We have the assurance of his peace. My peace I give to you. Not, not some peace, not some cessation of it. No, my peace I give to you. You think God is ruffled about the, the crises around? It's that kind of peace that God has that he says that he has given us. That's assurance. The assurance of his peace. Secondly, we have the assurance of his promise. In my father's house are many dwelling places. It's a promise. And he says that I will, I will go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's a promise that Jesus said he's going to come again. Don't let the time, the length of time, um, discourage us. Thirdly, we have the assurance of his place. I go to prepare a place for you. There's a place. You know, we are so preoccupied with place. Some of us have a place where we go to have entertainment. A place for this, a place for that, a place to work out at the gym. I go to the, place, the gym to work out when I can. We are at a place now to, to 
of service fund for the dead. We have a place where we go to um, have babies and so on in the hospital. We are place oriented. Well, here Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. But you know what? The real life, or real life is hidden with Christ in God. If there's any place, it's not just a, a special place alone, but it's a, it's a relational place that in Jesus, we find that he is the place. The place is a person. And the person here is a person who has everything that we need. We're told in the word of God that, you know, our life, if you're a Christian, is hidden, present tense, hidden with Christ in God. What a combination. That's security. That's safety. We are security and safety oriented. The car we drove here, the building we are in right now, we, it's safety. What about safety of the soul? That you know, that death, the Bible says, we have passed from death unto life because we are in Christ Jesus. So although joy is dead physically, she is alive spiritually. Because the word of God said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So therefore, we have shown up of his presence. Where I am, there you will be also. Now this, this presence talk about to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That is very important. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8 states this. Absent. And in, in the Greek the emphasis is that it is that from, from this sphere of people and association with people to another sphere. The word present is another word in the Greek which emphasizes present with people, to be present with the Lord. And the word with emphasizes a face-to-face -face about um, many different Greek words for, for, for with, and the one used here means a face-to-face -face with. You know, there are other people with us in Brampton. Another word could be used for that. They're not face-to-face -face with us, no. <coughs> so this is the word used here, that he is a, with the Lord, face-to-face, -face, so there's conscious awareness of, of, of the other person of Jesus Christ and others at death when we, when we pass this life. So the brain is dead. Yes, everything ceases concerning that. That's why we sleep in Christ. Sleep not in the sense of soul sleep, but sleep in the sense of not being aware of life as it is in this world. And also to awaken in the sense of resurrection that is to come in the future. And then we have the assurance of his, the Bible says, death is gain. No, because she, that Christian, is lost to us, what's gain for her? What kind of language is this? How can death be gain? How can the Bible says in Revelation that, that blessed are the dead who die in the Lord? How can the dead be blessed? Because they die in the Lord. And so we have the assurance also of his pathway. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way is not following some code. It's not even following some scriptures. Because the scriptures point beyond itself, themselves to, to, to Jesus Christ. They testify to me. And so therefore, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Notice that I'm not a way, a truth, and a life. I'm the, the definite article is used, not the indefinite article. I am the way, there's no other way. The truth, there's no other truth. The life, he is that. And the way, the truth, and the life is not a system, it's a person. Jesus Christ. The assurance of his pathway. And then finally, we have the assurance of his power. As we read in the lesson earlier on, Jesus said the, um, the change and the resurrection in a flash. His power, that when he comes, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive shall be changed in a narrow second. Shall be changed. And this is a change for the best. Death wears your sting, grave wears your grave. Victory. Death will be swallowed up in victory. This is like an, a matchstick floating over Niagara Falls. And that's the Canadian side, I'm talking. <laughs> Just think about a 
majestic going over Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Death is swallowed up in the victory of Jesus Christ. Job 10, verse 12 says, You gave me life, you showed me kindness, and in your providence you watched over my spirit. Only God does. God has not abandoned us. There's a song which says, from a distance, God is watching. You know, you know let me blow. it's a nice song, but it's theological and not biblical. God is not watching from a distance. Romans 8 tells us about three groanings. The old creation is groaning. We are groaning within creation, and the Spirit of God groans within us. God has not abandoned us. He's the Holy One who is among us. Immersed in our suffering, groaning with us, and creation groans, anticipating a change where everything will be new. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, because the former things have already passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4 said, Not shall pass away, but they have already, been, have already passed away in Christ, because He is the first and the last. What kind of language is that? How can a person and a being be first and last at the same time? How can Jesus say, before Abraham was, I am? Because Jesus is God. And Jesus is also man at the same time without ceasing to be God. And that's why he can do what others can't do. And he can do it not just at a distance, but coming down and be part of our suffering, dying our death, wearing our skin, identifying our sinfulness without sinning in that sinfulness, and resurrecting, bringing us out of the, the grave, and ascending, coming back and making all things new. That's the hope we have in Christ Jesus. And so, what shall we do until then? Until our time? Couple things. One, we need to maximize our opportunities. We have a time frame of life now. Don't drink. Maximize your opportunities. Second, we need to utilize our uniqueness. There's none like you, none like me. You know, when we leave here, we learn from her life. But when our time comes, comes, what will others say about this? We need to utilize our uniqueness. She utilized her uniqueness. And we're all touched in one way or another. Although I did not know her directly, but I know her through others. If you, know that. you see, you cannot bury influence. You can bury the body, but you cannot bury influence. Influence. Her, her life flows through us into our essence, influence. Thirdly, we need to actualize our aspirations. We all have aspirations. And many of us live most of our lives not, not actualizing them. Because we, we don't come out of our comfort zone. We need to do that. That's only when we grow. Then fourth, we need to unctionize our action, our actions. Unctionize our actions. That what I mean by that is that we need to recognize that our actions have efficacy, has power. Actions count. Now we can we can we can have all the desire, we can have all, make all the decisions, but if we don't have the discipline to act upon that, nothing. Happens. We have to discipline our impulses, discipline our emotions, discipline our intellect, and discipline our imagination. Fifthly, we need to individualize our challenges. Individualize our challenges. We all have challenges. When we leave here, oh my, I have so many challenges. Each of us, we have so many challenges. Individualize them. Take them on one by one. <coughs> Then we need to customize our compulsions. We are compulsive people. Compulsive. Let them specialize. And finally, we need to prioritize our relationships. And what I mean by that is that put God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and everything else will fall into place. God must be put first. God is our creator and our redeemer. We must put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's a command in, 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 the, in the Gospels. And what we do, we put everything else first. And when trouble hits, that is when we decide, Yo, where is God at that time? But in the good times and in the bad times, when you're healthy and young and so on, young, you know, seek the Lord, put God first. The Bible says that. Young people, serve the Lord as a creator in the days of your youth. So when all evil times come in the sense of it, you, 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 you start to fall apart, the teeth come out of your mouth, you, 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 you start to, when you're young, you feel as if you're going to live a thousand years, you know. Right? Yeah, you feel like you're going to live forever, man. I tell you, man, which person 70 years old jump out of bed this morning? <laughs> what the young ones do, but there's a time, you know, when I see young people running and doing that, I don't get envious of it, give them 50 years. <laughs> Why is it all of this? It's because we need to, we have priorities, but is God the number one priority? Because he gave us being. Not our parents. We need, I need, he, he gave us being. He gives me self-awareness. He gave me the uniqueness of, of me. God's gift to me is eternal life. But his also his gift to me is me. And yet, I'm giving my allegiance and my priority to everything else. And it is through the scriptures we get to know this God. So it's prior tense. Put God first, closer to God, then put yourself second. Love the Lord thy like God with all your heart, soul, mind, and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. No, I'm not talking about narcissism. I'm not talking about self-worship. There's a right kind of self-love. And we cannot love others if we don't love ourselves. So take care of yourself. <coughs> love yourself. Amen? Amen. And then you'll be able to love others because you begin to, just like you, you, you value yourself as worthy, as worth, of self-worth, you will recognize that others like you have the all same self-worth. So you love them as you love yourself. Brethren, God bless you. This is the assurance we have that God is for us. God is not against us. He's against sin, the enemy, everything. But God is for us and he's for us in the person of Jesus. At this time, I would just like to pray for the family. For the family that's come out. Jesus, we want to thank you that you are the God of all kinds of comfort, and you comfort us in all of our troubles, so that we in turn will comfort others with the comfort that we receive from you. I pray for this family, O oh God, that you'll again dispense the comfort that they need appropriate to each of their pain and sorrow. And as they leave here, O oh God, they might pass through different stages and phases of mourning and grieving. I pray, O oh God, that you will put meaning to their pain. And, O oh God, that through the pain, it will be a sign of giving new birth to a, a, a freshness in their lives so that they will, will start to appreciate life more start to make things that they do really count, oh God. More than anything, God, I pray that you will bring them closer to each other and bring them closer to you because in so doing, oh God, it will fulfill the purpose of your existence. I pray, oh Father, for all of us here as we come 
as we share this service, that we will never forget this service. It will be etched in our hearts and our minds. Remember joy and the joy that she brought to us and that she will continue to bring to us as we remember her. Oh God, that her life will not only impact this generation through their, her children, but through their children too and generation way beyond. And so I commit this family to you, O oh God, and I pray that your grace, your mercy, and your peace will be with them now and forevermore. Amen. And I pray for all the relatives here, O oh God, and friends, that they too will be comforted in different ways, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we know, at the moment of Joy's passing, she was received into the arms of the Lord Jesus. We have sent from the body, as I said earlier, to be present with the Lord. So she's on the other side. But her remains are here. And so, for as much as it has pleased Almighty God, in his wise providence, to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our deceased sister, Joy. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand? As we repeat the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy son, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup running over. Surely goodness of me will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We repeated it, and now we're going to sing it. We're going to celebrate. Isn't that wonderful?
Jalen, you there? You better be there. Gone? I'm not sure if Jalen's there. Are you recording it too or not? It's being recorded, yeah. Oh, it's on YouTube. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to the hall. Thank <laughs> you. 